vacate the base. The ball is taken there and they tag them. That first rule is going to be out. Well, one that was on first base. Okay. Now, same scenario. We only have the runners. Second is out. The lead runner is out. One that has to vacate the base is out. Oh, wow. She has to go to third. If she doesn't, she will be the one called out. Oh. And now we just have runners in second and third. And the ball's kicked. The little girl at third does not have to come home. If the girl from second runs over there and standing on the base with her, when the ball's taken over there and they appeal it, you can't have two girls standing on the base. That's the only time that you can call a girl out standing on the base. Right. Remember, so the proper the appeal, like if a girl doesn't tag up at second, she goes to third, and you take the ball over there and tag her at third, not out. But when they're two standing on the base second. and you tag her, she is. So if she say she's she goes to third, they're both at third, and she tells the third baseman to get off, and she starts running, she makes it home, she's safe. With, I mean, you know, well, when she pitch. touched her, she's out. She just assisted her. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no, because we've had that happen. when there's an appeal. <laughs> but if there was no <laughs> appeal, she can She can push her and tell her. We changed that. Yeah, she's not out. She's not out. I mean, you can tell her, hey, go. Do that. The other players can, yeah. but not. Okay. So, so. But then, and now they're in jeopardy because one of them's off the base. Okay. She can be thrown out. But if they were both okay, on the base, to everybody. the one from third but does not they, have to go home, and she wants to stay on that base, and they tag the girl, then the one that's coming from second is the one that's up. It's in jeopardy. Does that make sense? But they have to touch the base, and they can tag the girl. They can tag the girl. Hey, we had a, we had a question over here. About two runners being on the same base, who has the right to the base and who doesn't? Okay, here's the rule. If, let's say we have uh, runners at first and second, and we have, uh, and the ball's kicked. The girl at second does not go to third. The girl at first goes because she's got a kicker coming to first. And they're both standing on second base. I mean, there's two options. You can either take the ball to third because you got a force, or if you did take the ball over there and you tagged the girl, who would be out? The girl who must vacate the base, who should have went to third. Okay, now we have girls at second and third. Now, and the ball's kicked. We have an open base. The girl from second goes to third, and they're both standing on a base. Who's in jeopardy now? The girl that was the girl on, on second. And the question was also asked, if that girl is at second, and there hadn't been a, an appeal made yet, and she pushes that little girl off the third, say, go home, is that interference? No. Only, she's in the game. She's part of the game. She can assist. Where it changes is, if after, you know, you get one girl that comes in and scores, and you get another girl that comes in behind her, or one girl that comes in and she misses the plate, and then Linda comes in and touches the base, you cannot go back and touch home plate. Best thing for you to do is just go in the dugout and hope the uh, defense didn't see it. Because if you go back and try to touch, the red flag's gone off and they're gonna go over and touch the base. And what happens when you miss a base? The runner's out at the time you miss the base. So if that was the third out and she scored, there's no run. Does everybody understand that? Well, I got to tell them that there were an iron pitcher miss, the game was over. Well, if it's reached regulation and there's someone ahead. But if the home team is not, have a chance to kick and they're behind, they get the they get kick. Okay. So, just a clarification on when the, you know, we have an iron 15 minute time limit. If the home team is not ahead, in the fourth inning, they get their and time has expired. We've started that inning, right? Right. I mean, the, the visitors have kicked, and before the hour and 15 minutes was up. If not, if we hadn't reached the regulation, then that game would be replayed over. But if we started the inning, visitors have kicked. Of course, the home team gets to finish their inning, even though it may take an hour and 35 minutes to finish the game. But once you started that inning. And remember, the, the inning starts as soon as the third out is made. So, you know, we've got three outs, and you've got three minutes. You really don't want to start the inning. 
but you're supposed to, you, you have to. Tell them, kick her up, let's get it going. You know, because they may be going, shaking hands and go, hey coach, we got three minutes here. You know, let's get it going. But the home team always gets to finish their kick until they get, if they do get ahead, of course, and the time has expired, game's over. Once they've gone ahead in the fourth inning, game's over, shake hands, go home. What if you're tied before the end of the hour and 15 minutes? The time. If you're tied and, and still have time, you keep going. You keep going. Okay. You keep going. Oh yeah, like if you if you played seven innings and y'all are still tied and it, it, you haven't reached the hour and fifteen minutes, you play. Well, you mentioned the importance of writing the time the game began, but it's just as important to write the time the game ended, correct? Sure. Okay. It would help. And remember, umpires, if you're the home plate umpire especially, when the game is over, don't you know, run to the restroom. I know you may have to, but go up there and look at the scorebook. Make sure it's right. Sign it. Now we have an official scorekeeper has signed it. You've signed it. We have a legal game. If there's something that happened during that game that's in question, we know who who were the officials, and then we can get it resolved. Otherwise, we have nothing to go on if we just have, you know, the Dolphins played the Barracudas, and this was the score, and we have that's it, you know. Jimmy, I have a question, or just to, to clarify, what exactly is not counted towards that time? Official timeouts, injury officials timeout, timeout like for injury, uh, do not. Count. And what should happen is the home plate umpire who's in charge of the game, if it takes five minutes to take care of a little girl who's hurt herself, once y'all break, he should turn to the, to the official scorekeeper and say, we're going to put five minutes on the game. Because that is not part of that hour and 15 minutes on official timeouts for injuries. What about an appeal that's going on you any Any time an umpire calls out for timeout for uh, Something to clarify something that may take a while, you, you need to add that to the game. Not uh, your timeout, because really we should only give you about 30 seconds, 60 seconds for a timeout. Some, some umpires have let coaches stay out there way too long. I mean, let them get out there, have their say. Always at about 45 seconds, I'm headed out there. Let's get this game going. Don't drag it on. Any other questions? Okay, what we're going to do, if you have, I don't know what what your leagues want to do, but if all of you are going to test, if you have a coach's card, I will not be issuing new cards. Those cards are good for 011, but what a lot of leagues do, I do, as president of Northwest Corpus is, I make everybody take the test every year because I think they're out of, we, I had my clinic yesterday, I had 95 people that took the test and I think three of them made 100. So they don't know everything and they've been, a lot of these people have been in the league 20 years. So it's good to always test yourself and you know, it helps as a, you know, as a coach.